All right, welcome back to the broadcast. Thank you so much for staying with us. It's time for a discussion of the night. And uh, as we all know, the unemployment rate in the country is becoming a worrying trend, or rather is already a worrying trend. And uh, this has mostly hit the youth, who constitute 75% uh, of the Kenyan population. And this is according to the 2019 um, census. So tonight, we want to hear from the youth's perspective. I am being joined by Kai Kai Naipa May, who is live in studio. And um, Valentine Mugun, who will be joining, who is joining us live. That is, um, Kai Kai is the CEO for Youth Champions for Sustainable Development Goals, and Mugun is the youth leader for Global Partnership for Education in Kenya. Kai Kai, welcome back to KUTV. I know you're not a new face. <laughs> yeah, this is home to you, right? Thank you. How are you doing this evening? All right, glad to have you here. That's Valentine, is Valentine there? All right, we will come back to, to her later. You're there? All right, glad to have you here. That's Valentine, okay. is Valentine okay, there? Okay, I'll start with you. What do you right, make you of um, the 2023-2024 budget right, from the youth standpoint? Okay. Is it a hit or miss? Um, the budget is all inclusive, mm -hmm. but um, I like all youth to look in an all-inclusive sector mm -hmm. because like in the sector of tourism this tourism promotion fund which is two billion mm -hmm. the youth should tap in that space that there is a lot of money put in space and of course we are the dig digital people to promote kenyan tourism we should not only look at the state department of youth affairs and art what they are located but rather we should look like we should look entirely at the spaces that we can tap and where we are pro. Like in that tourism promotion fund, which is two billion, mm -hmm. the youth has a huge opportunity. And in the Ministry of Environment, there is uh, projects for like innovative projects on matters of climate change, mm -hmm. which is around 500 million. The youth should also tap. That is also a win for us. Mm -hmm. And then in the Ministry of livestock and agriculture there is a lot of opportunities for us because like you see they're investing in crops like cotton parithram mm -hmm. and and uh, edible oils which takes three months to grow so we are ahead of other farmers because we are tech savvy mm -hmm. so if you have your one acre and you've planted parithram you can use your tiktok followers twitter and to reach the market easily compared to your parents who are not like in this space. Mm -hmm. So I feel like the budget is inclusive, but not enough because mm -hmm. um, the youth incubation centers mm -hmm. in the counties, which is stated in the budget, are given very little money in millions, which we expected to be billions, because for one incubation center to be set up and running mm -hmm. will cost at least 250 million Kenya shillings. Mm -hmm. So my suggestion is that the budget should allocate to Constituency Youth Incubation and Innovation Center, at least 10 billion Kenya shillings, not 500 million. Mm -hmm. And then the, the money that is given to NYS, which is uh, 13 billion, is, is a bit not realistic to me because mm -hmm. as we speak, NYS just trains the youth, then after that, what follows? Mm -hmm. But you see, I'm not saying they shouldn't be given a fund, they should, but I feel like they should prioritize on what will create more job given opportunities should, to young people like than what should just give them skills and leave them hanging. So uh, in this space, I feel like incubation centers and innovation centers are more important for us to get job opportunities because a good example is if you study software engineering, mm -hmm. it's a one course here in LX. After you're done, you actually don't need Safaricom to employ you. You can start developing your own app and sell it to those who use it and improve it. It's efficient. Or you can start your own business. Like there's so many youth who are taking the lead. Like uh, my friend in Nawiri is using technology to connect farmers to giving them information to plan what is right and connect them to the market mm -hmm. because he did software engineering. So I feel like the government should put more money to where that we know after you get this skill. I'm entirely going to get a source of income. Mm -hmm. But NYS is not guaranteed that after you've trained protection, it's a good thing, it's mm -hmm. a good skill, but there is no immediate 
income mm -hmm. that people who graduate from NOS do get. But people who graduate from technological related courses, mm -hmm. they actually don't need government support after getting the skill. Mm -hmm. What they need is them to develop up and get some incentive and subsidized loans to start over. And then they'll em employ because tech, when someone runs a tech firm, mm -hmm. they'll employ up to 60 people. But when someone gets skilled for NYS, he will get a job as a police officer. There's no employment for someone else. So I'm requesting like the government to, to look at the budgets they have allocated priority. I feel at this point, mm -hmm. NYS is not a priority to be given billions of money, mm -hmm. yet incubation centers are given millions. Like the point is we want to create job opportunities for youth. Mm -hmm. So the space that creates job opportunities for youth should be allocated more money. And the other concern is like the priority of events. Uh, in the budget, uh, prisons are allocated 35.5 billion. Mm -hmm. According to the economy of the country, yeah. and what it's not only Kenya, mm -hmm. the world is facing economic crisis and struggles. And because Kenya is a youthful population, the youth are really suffering with unemployment. Mm -hmm. People have graduated 65,000 plus every annual year. They graduate, but there are no jobs. Mm -hmm. So I feel at this point, prisons budget should be halved because they are not a priority at this point. And then the 15 billion from the prisons mm -hmm. should be given to youth innovative ideas and projects. And then in the next year, because this project will take one year for them to start picking and making money. Mm -hmm. The next year, we don't have an issue when they give prison even 50 billion because we'll be earning a source of income. We'll have employed more youth who are doing petty issues mm -hmm. to be taken to prisons. So actually, we will reduce the population of youth because I, I, I always visit Langata women prison mostly mm -hmm. because sometimes a youth called you he, she was working or he was working in town mm -hmm. and they're taken to prison because they can't afford 500 shillings. Mm -hmm. So I feel like those many petty issues when they invest a huge budget on us, on technology and self-creation opportunities for us, it will give us an opportunity to create more employment for other youth, reducing crime rate, mm -hmm. reducing mental issues, uh, reducing, you know, a drug abuse because these young people are getting into this space because of frustration from life. You know, we had this perfect idea in our minds that after graduation, I'm going to get a government job as long as I have a second class and above. Mm -hmm. But right now, even those who are first class, they don't even have a source of income, let alone like their dream jobs. Mm -hmm. So if we are being given enough budget, and this one is like, I feel if the budget is given little money, then there's a high loophole for corruption to happen. Mm -hmm. Because if you give th a few millions to uh, constituency incubation centers, mm -hmm. I, and I say I'm an economist and I did my research, one will cost at least 250 billion to run and to be active that it will benefit us mm -hmm. in every constituency. We have 290 of them. If you give two million to each, mm -hmm. Where is the MP and people from that community going to raise the rest of the money? That means the two million actually, it will just disappear in the air because how will they start a project that is not even quota financed? But if they give 10 billion, mm -hmm. it will at least finance to some point that if we will ask for grants from international organization, mm -hmm. they will see like, yeah, the government tried, the year is a structure, they have put the internet, but they don't have uh, expertise mm -hmm. and they don't have enough computers. The youth are here. Uh, let's take a good study of India. India invested a lot on the youth in the tech space. Mm -hmm. And for after 10 years, in, in, uh, uh, in the US, when you go there, the best tech centers, their managers are Indians. And they are very good at it. Because of what? Because their government saw the future before the rest of the world saw it. Mm -hmm. And they invested a lot in it. And that is what we are requesting the government to do. We are telling them we appreciate the allocation of money. But it is not enough. Mm -hmm. As you all know, the five agendas of the president mm -hmm. to cash on the 
high cost of living. Yeah. The, the fifth of them is uh, uh, high, uh, in, uh, tech, digital superhighway. So the digital superhighway should really be given enough funds for it to get into realization. Mm -hmm. and, and then in agriculture, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm a champion. So uh, agriculture, as young people, we need to get back to it. Mm -hmm. Because we are going to urban centers. We are leaving fertile lands in the village. Mm -hmm. We are leaving it to our parents. We are coming to scramble and partition for very few jobs. Mm -hmm. You saw the job which was advertised by G4S. It was 100 positions. Yes. Mm -hmm. And how many youth did you see them lining up? Thousands of them. Imagine if thousands of them were mm -hmm. in the village helping producing food mm -hmm. and using their smartphone, which they are dancing in TikTok and trends and showcasing what they're doing in the farm, uh, agricultural regenerative uh, activities mm -hmm. that will take care of the environment mm -hmm. and to water and the soil. If we would have been doing that, and that is what you should be doing, mm -hmm. because the Ministry of Livestock and Agriculture has been allocated a lot of funds, mm -hmm. and who are going to take that fund to benefit? It is us, the young people, because the old people are not aware of export markets, mm -hmm. but we are. Mm -hmm. The old people are not aware that, you know, I can actually still plant one acre of land that used to give me five sacks of maize, and I can multiply it to give me 20 sacks of maize because these things are written in English. Our parents, our grandparents who are doing farming mm -hmm. don't understand, but we do. Mm -hmm. So it's high time we take advantage of all spaces. There's, there's a huge opportunity for young people in this budget, mm -hmm. in the space of environment, in the space of agriculture, mm -hmm. in the space of tourism, as I said earlier. And in the space that the government have said uh, digital superhighway, mm -hmm. but we are requesting the government kindly make the budget to 10 billion for digital incentive and hub in constituency level. Thank you. All right. Now I want to hear the same from Valentine. Now, Valentine, I hope you can hear me. What do you make of the 2023-2024 budget? I'm posing this question to you. I have just, we've just had um, Naipa May give us a standpoint. So what's your Valentine? Okay, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Valentine Chokwech Mugun. I'm a youth advocate. I also work with the Youth Enterprise Development Fund in the Finance Department. Aside from that, I'm a Global Partnership for Education Youth Leader, so thank you for that. One thing that I've really seen that has been highlighted in this budget is the increase of interns from 4,000 to 8,000 mm -hmm. uh, that will be absorbed by the, uh, that will be taken by the government for one year. But this has always been an issue of concern to me because I always feel like we have these interns for one year, then after one year, we leave them back to the, you know, they go back to the job market. There's, you know, your hopes are raised for one year, then after one year, you go back, the possibility of absorption is such is so so low. So I think the government should look into absorbing these interns to see what can be done to get these interns into the job market. Because now having that, there are so so many even my friends that I know that are on these government internships. But one year later, you are no longer eligible for the internship program, and so you just go back and get unemployed. I don't think. It's a solution, but it's really a short-term solution. Just gives you the experience for one year. I don't think that really, really um, is going to be it's something sustainable. So I think the government should prioritize probably absorbing this in terms into the job market so that you know we can create more job opportunities for the young people. Um, uh, at least there are other se sectors that have more money now that have been allocated more money. Mm -hmm. I'm an education. Um, I really. Love, um, as a GP, youth advocate, I advocate for more funding for education, mm -hmm. which I'm really, really happy is happening. Because if you'd have looked at what was happening in the current education system, even in the junior secondary schools, you realize that most of the learners, in fact, don't really get that quality education because it was left like hanging. But right now, at least more money has been allocated to that. And also to teach us that, of course, majority of them comprised of the young people, mm -hmm. and most of them had really been unemployed. It's really been difficult for them, but at least now uh, this new budget is going to cater for the hiring of more teachers. But even as we think of this uh, budget options and how you know this has been aided, we should even think explore more options as young people. You see, the government may not solve all our problems, but 
already being learned and graduating already at least gives you a bit of exposure to the world. I was just talking to a friend um, just like an hour ago, and he was telling me how we graduated together and we just met coincidentally today, and he was telling me how much he has ventured into the entrepreneurship space, the agribusiness specifically, and so he links farmers back uh, back in his home to Nairobi. He knows how to, you know, mm -hmm. he's the, now the link. He can know how to transform things. You know, he has the knowledge of the market that we young people have. You know, at least we have the knowledge. Mm -hmm. You also look at the finance bill about the digital, um, the taxing of the digital service. I think the government is not realizing that, you know, there is job creation, there is money in the digital space. And also a beautiful thing that aside from the traditional jobs, we can now get jobs online and that is what we should really be looking at right now. The government should focus on so much digital infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Once you just enable us to get that access to the internet, we can get so, so many job opportunities. So just empowering. Mm -hmm. I like what Ajira has been doing, empowering and educating youth on how they can make money actually online. I am a beneficiary. I learned about Ajira, you know, I learned how to even use these virtual platforms, how you can sell yourself virtually. So I think we should really, really also invest on that because honestly speaking, mm -hmm. we are producing so many graduates and the <clears throat> market looks saturated. So getting everyone into the job market formally is going to be so, so difficult. But if you're going to expand more options, look at the digital space and get young people there. I think we're really going to get a lot of opportunities for our young people. So that is what I would encourage any young person right now. Yeah, you know, think beyond. You can no longer just keep on relying on the government that has sometimes failed as young people. We have to also look and see the opportunities that we can mm -hmm. get for ourselves, whether partnering, look at the agencies around that can offer such services, even insist, you know, Talk about the counties. Like, I come from Kericho County, and I'm happy because the governor has just prioritized and had some agricultural extension officers there at that time. So, that you know, we cannot start thinking of how we can get agriculture being done by our young, vibrant people, and that is something inspiring. So, we can even encourage now the countries to have innovation hubs for these young people to think of ideas, to have free access to internet and laptops, and they can work from there. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Valentine. Now, I'll come back to you, <coughs> KK. With the current state of the economic situation, you have said that the government has allocated a lot of funds to in, in the tourism sector and the Ministry of Agriculture, which you've mentioned that this is going to create um, enough job opportunities for the Kenyan youth. But how long should the youth expect to see these changes? Um, for agriculture, mm -hmm. let me start with agriculture. The, the step were taken earlier this year. Mm -hmm. And so the first product of like food production, we should see it by beginning of next month, according to regions. You know, maize grows between four months to six months, mm -hmm. according to the heat level in mm -hmm. a region. So like where I come from, because it's cold, mm -hmm. it's like six months. But maybe in a warmer place, it's like four months. So the subsidized fertilizer and seedlings mm. was their medium term proposal of the government mm -hmm. to curb uh, the cost living of Unga price. Mm -hmm. So we are expecting that within a month or two, the maize will come out of uh, the farm and then the cereals are gonna buy it. And remember the proposal of the finance bill is mm -hmm. that anything that is related to cereals will, not, will be at zero taxation. So we're expecting that after that, after the harvest, the two kg unga will go back to when I was in campus. Mm -hmm. I used to buy it at around uh, 89 shillings. Or maybe because, you know, the world has changed, it should be at least 120 or 150 bob, two kg, and then one kg would be 75 shillings. So th those are things that are already been done. But those which are not be done, like the proposal of, of edible oils, you've been seeing like most of the state officers have been traveling signing deals. So everyone have been asking, mm -hmm. all these deals you guys are signing, when are we getting the fruits? So uh, as Kenyans mm -hmm. and as young people, we should understand the process of like partnership with uh, domestic and foreign individual. For foreign individuals, you have to go through a series of meetings and agreements so that like 
the plan of the government is not only for us to be producing, for example, edible oils mm -hmm. for our own market. That is why you see these guys went to those countries, the same deals that mm -hmm. after they have now infested on us planting those crops, mm -hmm. sunflower and such that will produce edible oils, we'll be able to get both local markets for companies like Bidco mm -hmm. and enough to export because you know the, 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 the law for exportation is that you must first supply to domestic market, the East African market, the commercial market, and then after meeting that is when you can supply to the rest of the world. So if you see the government is committed to like investing money for these state officers to travel so many trips and using the taxpayers' money, it means that these deals have to be sustainable. Mm -hmm. it, we don't want a situation, the government don't want a situation that they sign a deal just within one meeting and then in the process realize because of hurry, they sign things which are going to hurt us more than where we are right now. Mm -hmm. So that is why there was a series of meetings, number one. I'm just trying to explain so that I've seen so many people on social media saying like, mm -hmm. why wouldn't they do on Zoom meeting? Like, because it's a partnership and mm -hmm. sometimes because it's like you're talking with the president of another country, mm -hmm. you want them to give you a market that is going to help your people create wealth, mm -hmm. then you do. The, uh, the least commitment you could show is go see them in their home place. Mm -hmm. It's just like when you want to marry a, a girl and you're telling their parents, can I Zoom you, we talk about the dowry. <laughs> it's disrespectful, uh -huh. so it's just the same. So mm -hmm. uh, like for those, mm -hmm. now that the final deals are reached, almost most of them are being finalized, we're expecting that there will be capacity building first mm -hmm. for small scale farmers and for large scale farmers and for youth, because you know we don't know farming. And plus, again, these are new products. I didn't grow up in Narok seeing sunflower. Mm -hmm. So the, the government will involve their best agronomists and field officers, agriculturists. Mm -hmm. They'll take citizens through capacity building. They'll be told the processes, the soil will be tested because the yield should be international standard. Mm -hmm. That means the process uh, capacity building will take at least a month or three. If it is across the country, it will take more than three months. But I think because it's a pilot project, it will start with maybe 10 counties. Uh, I know Busia and Siaya is one of those counties. Actually, it's starting from 11 counties. Mm -hmm. Busia, Siaya, Mranga, Darakanithi, uh, Meru, Embu. Yeah, so like those are the ones I can remember. So mm -hmm. those counties are going to be like the case study. So the farmers in those counties will be taken into capacity building. They'll be taught how they do it, farms that qualify. Those that don't, uh, do not qualify for edible oils, they can qualify for pyrethra. Those that do not qualify for pyrethra, they can qualify for cotton. Mm -hmm. So there is advantage because it's not only one crop that now those who have, let's say, poorer soil will feel like the government had us. And then after that, they will plant the crops and it must be, it must satisfy domestic market, mm -hmm. and then the sign agreement. Those countries, if we agree that we're going to supply ten tons every month, mm -hmm. we should live to that agreement. Because in economics and in agreements, if you don't fulfill your agreement, then it will be disowned next. And if it is disowned, whose fault will it be? Will mm -hmm. it be for the government or for Kenyans who are <laughs> farming? So that's the point. So for mm -hmm. the youth, I believe like the food issue, uh, the maize issue is one one month, two months, we'll see the results. Mm -hmm. But the rest, which are stated in the budget and in the finance bill, it will have to take some time. Mm -hmm. We can see it maybe because like Paretram takes 75 days mm -hmm. for it to uh, mature, same as cashew nuts. So those, if it is 75 days and capacity building takes, takes 30 days, mm -hmm. do the math. You will see the results like you are harvesting it and there is ready market. The good thing is there is ready market. That is why I'm telling the youth, let's get back to agriculture because the government has done its best. They've looked for us, ready market. And then let me talk about export processing zone authority mm -hmm. because the government has invested 3 million, 3 billion, sorry, to construct six more in six different counties. That is uh, in Eldoret, in Busia, uh, another one in Northeastern area. Mm -hmm. So if you see like 
3B is being uh, infested mm -hmm. so that we can export these products and we will not have to go to Kitengela. Mm -hmm. It is brought to most regional areas. So it makes it easier. And then the leather uh, space. The leather space actually for ASAL people, people from ASAL region, we have a big win in this budget mm -hmm. because for the first time, we are even given like uh, around a billion for like technological integration in agriculture. So if you are a young person from Asal region and you have an idea that this can work in Kajado and it is technology, but if I work with farmers, it's mm -hmm. gonna work, you're gonna get money mm -hmm. to make your project, your idea into reality and you're gonna help your people. So, mm -hmm. and then if it works that you can produce enough food for your region to export, the EPZ are being constructed in counties. So it will be so easy for you to scale up your business mm -hmm. to export, that is to international market. So anyway, in short, what I'm saying is that some results will be recent and some will be, it will take a while according to how the government have planned. I'm not the government, so mm -hmm. they have their plans, but in mm -hmm. a nutshell, mm -hmm. that, those are the, pro, the, the, the steps of the agriculture space, mm -hmm. which they've put in place. Mm -hmm. and, and there's also a lot of opportunity in blue economy. Mm -hmm. So as young people from Lake Victoria region mm -hmm. and the coastal region, mm -hmm. there are a lot of funds which are put there. Like I saw there's a location of several millions mm -hmm. in innovation related to blue economy. So you guys know when I talk technology, mm -hmm. that is our space. Yes. So you take advantage of it mm -hmm. and then don't just look at the youth affairs department mm -hmm. kindly. All state departments, they have a project mm -hmm. that is actually ours. Mm -hmm. So it's up to us. But again, a major, a major request I need to make before I wind up. <laughs> the tourism, oh, yeah, about yeah, time. yeah, the tourism, uh -huh. the tourism promotion, mm -hmm. the two billion. Mm -hmm. Kindly, whoever who sees this, make sure it reaches to those in authority and most especially to the president. We are requesting that as young people, we have forty-seven counties. Every county has a unique space and a unique tourist, tourism attraction site. Let the youth on those specific county be the one promoting their, their counties mm -hmm. and promoting their cultures. Mm -hmm. We are having an issue that people mm -hmm. who are not Maasai are promoting Maasai culture. Mm -hmm. No, we're not going to agree on that. In Maasai Mara, we expect people who are mm -hmm. promoting Maasai Mara are Maasai. People who are promoting uh, Taita Taveta conservancy area mm -hmm. are Taitas. And people are promoting Samburu Conservation Area Amasai. So kindly, whoever is in that authority, as young people from this region, mm -hmm. we are suffered. And actually, the funny thing, sometimes they are not even youth. Mm -hmm. They are old people who are just taking our space. So that two billion, as, as a youth leader, mm -hmm. I'll actually hold accountable, especially that tourism promotion, two billion. And it will be all inclusive. It should be mm -hmm. all inclusive mm -hmm. and all the youth in every region. If you know your place has a uh, hot water spring mm -hmm. and you see me, Kaikai from Narok, coming to Nakuru, a Kikuyu place, promoting that, you are at liberty to chase me away because that is the, <laughs> your space to get that money. All right, let's Thank listen you. to what um, Valentine has to say right there about um, the Global Partnership for Education as we wind up by the way, Valentine. Tell us what are your long-term goals with the Global Partnership for Education as the youth leader for that um, area? Okay, so I'm currently on a campaign uh, in Kericho County to return teenage mothers back to school because we realized that during the COVID pandemic, a lot of our young girls dropped out of school and as a result, were not able, you know, they were not able to go back to school and these are young people that we're relying on. So I have a campaign back at home to return these teenage mothers back to school and that's what we do with the support of the Global Partnership for Education. I'm encouraging these young teenage mothers to go back to school. They fall under the youth bracket. So that is it about the Global Partnership for Education and Financing Education. But one thing I'd like to highlight again about the young people is about the agpo, the 30% agpo for the young people. You realize that we use other people. You see, these spaces are for youth, but they're used as proxies. You know, other people just get them 
to get that uh, 30 percent so it just appears youth but it's not really a youth group you know we can form and collaborate together in groups i work with the youth enterprise development fund and we fund we have lpo financing even lpo financing even in banks let us collaborate let us not agree to be used let us take up these opportunities that belong to the young people and take them to ourselves that you know we can benefit there are also a uh, different products that you know the internet should really be our friend as young people let us google and let us see the opportunities that are there currently in kenya for the youth enterprise development fund you just look at their website look at the various products that they have and you see try and apply you know walk into a center and look at applying i'm also working with the Nairi Kitty icons mm -hmm. in collaboration with the international republican institute they are advocating for the biashara award fund that was promised by governor sakadi that it should be operational we see that we have a lot of this youth bars in nairobi county so if the biashara award fund is going to be functional as promised by governor sakadi as we know that it's really going to help a lot of youth in Nairobi County be able to access finance. We just want the bottlenecks to be accessing this finance removes that you know these young people can get into this space. Another thing, let us really be young entrepreneurs. Let us think outside the box. Let us look at the opportunities that are presented to us. You see, think about the digital opportunities, about you know the market linkages that we can do. The digital um, campaigns that we can have let us take up our space as young people let us own our space as youth and with this i think we're really going to go far as a country we just need the youth leadership you know we need us you know we always say that there can be nothing for us without us in every space let us really make sure that we are there so that you know we can advocate for our issues better as young people when we are in those spaces but when we have other people that are talking on behalf of us it really becomes difficult so one thing that i would really like to encourage the kenyan youth is that let us be there you know let us grab opportunities whatever chance comes to us i'm currently also the deputy miss president the miss president kenyan uh, that just trained the other time and so there we were looking at the potential that we have as young people is really enormous. You see, the brains that we have is really, you know, we can collaborate together and think so that even come 2027, we could even have a youth-led organization or party that can, you know, even forward and we have many leaders that will represent us. I think that would really, really be good. So uh, that is it for me. Thank you so, so much for hosting me. And I'd like, you know, we can still collaborate and still talk so much more about youth opportunities that are in this space. Yes. Thank you so much, Valentine and Kai Kai Nakane, for your 